Welcome to Energizing Life with AKR Fitness. I'm Jace, I'm your host, at least for season one, and I'm joined at the breakfast bar with Mike. Hello. And Lindsay. Hello. Folks, this is episode one, podcast. We've, we've spoke about this for a while. It feels like the last couple of months, all we spoke about is pod, 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 pod. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're here. How are we feeling about it? Lindsay? Yeah. Mike. Yeah, it's been, it's, <laughs> Lindsay, Mike, Lindsay, Mike. it's been a long time coming and hey listen it's another step outside the comfort zone I'm sure there'll be a few blips and missteps along the way but we're here and um, yeah hopefully it goes well yeah I'm feeling excited about it a little bit nervous but ready to go you, you were the super sub right I was yes see so you might be subbed out then you maybe know, I will maybe I'll take your host <laughs> oh it's <laughs> kicking off already this this podcast is going to be a little bit longer we are going to introduce ourselves let the, the listeners know who we are, where we come from, and then we'll circle all back around to AKR, what AKR is and what we do here. So Mike, we're going to start with you. It's life story time. Life story. All right, here goes. Um, for me, I grew up obsessed with football. And I think from a young age, I was kind of put off by the idea of going and getting a normal job. You know, I wanted to do something that I was passionate about. Let's be honest, I wanted to be a footballer. I was fortunate enough that, you know, school kind of, came smooth to me, I would say. And that gave me two things. First of all, I had options for, for uni and what I could go study. And, you know, I was very much heading down the path of computer science or engineering, you know, encouraged to, to go get something that guarantees you a job sort of thing. Um, but the other thing is that I fostered a really positive relationship with learning. And that's something that's, that's stuck by me. Um, and so going into my sixth year, I, I decided to abandon my plans to study advanced higher maths and physics and uh, picked up a crash course in human biology instead and ultimately went and studied sports science at uni instead of, instead of the other options. What happens from there? Again, was that against all odds? Were people warning you from that? Yeah, like guidance teacher and that would say, you know, there's no jobs in sports science. I remember him specifically telling me his, his partner studied sports science and there was no jobs. So... You know, in Aberdeen, there's a, certainly at the time, there was a booming oil and gas industry and, you know, the other options would have more or less guaranteed me a, a job with a good wage. But just, yeah, for me, I, it was really important that I wanted to do something that I was interested in. And I was particularly interested in, in learning, you know, improving at football, like, you know, physical, physiology and all that sort of stuff. So it really appealed to me. And, and so when I got to uni, that's when it kind of, I had to begin to accept that I wasn't going to make it as a player. How hard was that? <laughs> I think it's gradual, to be fair, but, you know, I probably clung on for a long time, you know. Still are. Still yeah. are. Still. <laughs> there's still hope, right? There's still hope. No, there's not. <laughs> uh, but what I did was I, I turned my attention to, okay, if I'm not going to be a player, let's, let's work in football. That was the next best thing to me. And so I, I worked part-time in a supermarket at the time, and I quit that did some coaching certifications and started coaching kids part-time, you know, in the, in the school holidays and things like that. And I specifically remember, you know, saying to myself, right, I've got this three-pronged attack. I was going to take my, my football career, which was semi-pro. I was going to take my academic studies and I was going to do these coaching qualifications and that would give me the, the best chance of, of getting involved at, you know, professional football. Again, still looking to get involved at the, at the highest level. Yeah. So where did that three-pronged attack take you? Well, I guess I did, I did get to work in professional football, but it, it kind of, I guess my path took me slightly differently. So coming out of uni, get to the stage where I need a job. And ironically enough, I got a job working in, in oil and gas, but it was in... That's a 360 turnaround, was it? <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was, though. It was in, it was in health and fitness uh, in a company that, that worked in that setting. So it was, it was going to oil and gas companies and doing blood cholesterol checks, doing fitness assessments, and also working in a gym. It was a, the pri a private gym owned by an oil and gas company. And so that was, my, that was my first step. Aside from a few experiences at uni, that was my first step really working with adults and beginning to coach adults. And... And so I enjoyed that. More, did, than, sorry. I think we were going to ask the same question. Yeah. Did you enjoy that more than coaching the kids? Yeah, same question. <laughs> um, I'm not sure, to be honest. It was, it was, just, it was just a change. The, the problem with coaching the kids, like I was working for the local council and, and that was just school holiday work. There wasn't, there wasn't full-time employment, certainly at that time. It was probably time, just fun that. in the summer. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It was outdoor 
um, you know, coaching sports to kids in the, in the holidays. And, and so that was fine. Um, and so taking that job, I was still, you know, I was still very much into like learning and developing and I very much had my sights set on working in football and it's really hard to get in. So they're looking for people with postgraduates with UEFA pro license. There was an, there was an FA fitness trainers award that I'd applied to get on and I was put on the wait list for. And so I decided I would do a postgrad in sports nutrition. That course got postponed. I can't remember if it maybe by a year. And so I, I had a gap where I was like, well, I still want to do another course. And so I went and did my personal training course, which was six weeks in Spain. So that was a, that was a brilliant experience. I think I did mine in Dundee. <laughs> <laughs> it, was all, it was all in English, you know, it was all English speaking, but it was just, it was, it was a terrific experience. And, and coming back from that, I, I went into a new job. So there was a new, brand new sports facility opened in Aberdeen. And I think straight out my PT course, I took a job there. And Lindsay was on the team and that's, that's where we met. It was about 12 it years ago, 12, almost. It was almost 12 years, yeah. Coming up, I think July, was it? Yeah, 12 years. We'll come, we'll come, we'll come back <laughs> and we'll, we'll merge these stories in a minute. I just want to finish off with you, Mike, and, and then we'll move on. Okay, so, yeah, I started that job. Then I, I started the postgrad in sports nutrition, uh, which was, which was part-time distance learning. And the lecturer or the course leader of that course, uh, I think it was early 2010, got in touch and said, oh, there's an opportunity to go and work for Glasgow Rangers as a, as a nutrition oh, a pity. freelancer. It's <laughs> a shame. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> so it, it, it's funny because I got my opportunity. You know, they say often it's, it's who you know. Obviously, I was... There, there was there was a couple of qualifications that I picked up that Rangers were particularly looking for that I had, so that was a good fit. But so I got that experience. It ultimately it was a time when when Rangers folded, and so I, I didn't. You were turfed. Yeah, I was, yeah <laughs> long story short. Yeah, first gone. <laughs> but it, it gave me it gave me a sense of what it was like working in that world. You know, it was it was with the first team and things like that, ad hoc, a couple of times a month going going down there, and. I quickly realized that it wasn't going to be anywhere near as rewarding for me than working with with regular people, which I'd begun to do. I'd begun to do a bit of personal training in this job and things like that. And and so that was a, yeah, that was a big realization at the time. Different fulfillment almost. Yeah. I mean, you can change a whole, you can change someone's entire life or again, in the football club, you're, you're talking about Zero an extra percent. Zero. Yeah. 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 If that. So I was on a, I, I knew I was on a path. I was very you know, into this idea of personal training and helping people. Yeah, I had this this little need for a, a sense of adventure. I'd taken a couple of little trips with my friends in Europe, staying in hostels and things, and I was like, I wanna I wanna do something big. So it took a, a while to figure out exactly what that was. And ultimately what I what I decided to do was quit my job, book a one way flight to Argentina, had three nights accommodation and I was gonna backpack my way up through Latin America and finish under the mentorship of a personal trainer in California before coming home to, to start out on my own. That's a, that's a fair journey. No, it's life changing, it sounds. Yeah, well, it was a, it was a real ref, uh, reference point for me because I've definitely got a life before I went traveling and a life after. You know, I was only away for seven, seven a bit months, but aside from all the amazing experiences that I had, Maybe we'll get into some of those in another, another <laughs> show. But there's a, you know, when I came back, I was, I was, I've never been employed by anybody again. I was like, okay, I'm starting out on my own. I'm going to be a freelance trainer, and, and this is it. So you started as a freelance trainer. Where do we go from there? Yeah. So there was a there was a big box gym that was near to me, and you know, I, I remember came came home with grand plans to open my own facility, and even looked at a couple of units there, but uh, ended up. Moved in with my dad, stayed with him for free, went to this this uh, chain gym, started freelancing, you know, one one client, then two. And my plan was, you know, I need to get an office so that I can go move back into my flat yeah. so I can pay my mortgage. <laughs> um, did that within six months. And I think I was there for three years total before uh, before deciding to go out and, and open Acar Fitness. Just before we go on, I want to track back a slight little touch to the mentorship in California. Did, did you do it? Did you finish? Yeah, so, so the trip, it's, it's weird. I spent a long time 
visualizing and thinking about how I wanted my, my travels to go. But I'd, like I said, I only booked three nights. I, I, I had an idea, but I didn't plan everything meticulously, which if you know me, people might yeah, be surprised to hear that. <laughs> Bizarre. <laughs> Unbelievable. I remember one of my friends, um, when I told him what I was going to do, he was like, what? You would no hate that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bruce, if you're listening. I um, will say you were well prepared with the, a bag and shorts that went to trousers and a journal and so on. So it maybe took three or four months of preparation just to get the right amount of things into the bag <laughs> just before he was going to leave. So that was enough was preparation. Prepared, <laughs> I was prepared, but li- like literally just knew where I was starting and this guy who did the mentorship at that time he did a twice a year and I was just hoping that he was going to run one and it would get on and and when he opened the doors to it I think it was the first to book on and it just (laughs) everything went you know as a as a planned as a as I thought it would and you know Mm -hmm. yeah and then that brings you all the way to AKR which Lindsay this is where you are going to step in we're going to bridge over to you how did how was your journey to where you're at now Okay, so how far back do you want to go? Give me the diluted version, (laughs) please. (laughs) What do you mean? Keep it clean. (laughs) Okay, um, well, let's start with, I would say, as a young young Lindsay, a little rogue, I uh, had loads of energy, so much so that I was forced, I say forced, but put into as as many, forced into (laughs) as many activities as you can imagine. So karate, basketball, gymnastics which lasted about five minutes because they made me put on a leotard um and then football which i played right through and into my 20s there's a common denominator here uh, anyway don't want to talk about <laughs> so yeah through childhood really active energized constantly out climbing trees and then basically right through until probably fourth or fifth year I was dedicated to becoming a PE teacher, really wanted to probably just help people. Um, And at that stage, I hadn't really thought about personal training. I didn't really know what it was, to be honest. I don't think I'd I'd never set foot in a gym, even with playing football at at quite a high level. Um, So when it got to the the crunch point of fifth year, what am I choosing here? I decided to leave school before going into the sixth year as they weren't running the the courses that I wanted. Yeah. So like any good mother would, said, well, you can't leave until you get a job. Classic, um, classic line. <laughs> classic line. You're going to live in this house. <laughs> <laughs> so at that point, there, there was a job that came up in a hotel gym. So I went for the interview, got the job, and I thought, oh, actually, this could be quite good. But at that point, still a bit of a rogue, little bit of a rebel I never really had a direction um and it wasn't until I sort of had this I would say not a mentor but in that facility somebody that was kind of pushing me in the right direction and that's when I started to do my personal training qualifications in Dundee you said (laughs) (laughs) that's when I had to go for the the weekend to to do the the level two so I did level two a little bits and bobs with classes and things like that and then I actually went to Australia for three months Another traveller. Uh, this was the first time I went away. So I went to Australia for three months. First time, Mike. <laughs> first time. <laughs> and uh, stayed with my grandma and granda because they, they lived there for years. Um, it probably wasn't the best time in my life, but it was the right time to leave. So I left, came back, and that's when I really started dedicating myself to, to getting better and worked in different gyms throughout Aberdeen, finishing off the qualifications in Dundee. And then from probably 2009, that's where I sort of planted my feet at the the, um, Aberdeen Sports Village. Um, And that's where I met Michael. And still... Sorry to hear that, mate. (laughs) (laughs) So that was probably about 12 years ago now. Uh, I said my confidence was building then, so I was taking classes, personal training clients for the first time, looking back now some some stuff that I wish I never did but yeah. you learn you learn yeah. uh, so I was there for for three years so how did how did the, the merger of Lindsay and Mike come to be how was that how did that happen we were the first team in this new facility okay. so in yeah 2009 and I think we just got on 
quite quick. We, I looked up to him. He seemed to have his head screwed on more than I did at the time. Still does. And uh, yeah, I think we just just got on really well. We had the same sort of outlook. Yeah, it was just just a good fit. You mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, and then when Mike left to go traveling, it kind of inspired me a little bit. I'm like, what am I doing here? Like, is this what I want? Like, you kind of have a reality check. Okay, I've been doing this since I was 17, a little bit on and off. I'm now, what, 23, 24. If I don't do this now, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. So yeah, like Mike, packed a bag. I, I didn't, I sold, well, it was my mum's flat. So she sold it, I moved out, sold my car, left my girlfriend at the time and just went. And see ya. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> um, three months in America, three months in Asia, and about a year and a half in Australia. And I would recommend it to anybody. Well, well traveled. Yeah. And well experienced. Mm-hmm. And I would say the full commitment to what I'm doing now didn't start until I came back. Okay. Yeah. You, so traveling away, you just learn to. You found yourself, that's the... Well, you could that's, say that's that. A, that's the phrase, isn't it? I don't think I ever lost myself, but I think I came back a better yeah, person. focus. I think I came back a better person um, and more focused on what I wanted to do and, yeah, becoming a better human. And that led you to AKR? It did. It's a funny story, actually. So when I came back, um, Mike had started the, the AKR training camp and it was coming quite popular, and then he was getting busier with his clients. What was the AKR training camp? So it was, as I said, I, I was working in a in a gym, freelance, one-on-one, and the AKR training camp was my first foray into taking back a bit of control. So it was it was outdoor, small group PT, like a six-week block over the, over the summer months. So I'd done, 2014, I'd done two training camps. And um, by 2015... I was so busy in my, with my regular PT that when the, the summer months came, I couldn't I couldn't ditch them to go do the training camp. But Lindsay was back from travelling, and so it just so, so happens. It just, the, the timing fit really well to say, okay, well, Lindsay, I'm I'm looking to open a gym, not ready yet. Mm-hmm. Here's a little opportunity, uh, shall test. we say, for you to. It was definitely a test. It was. De- How do you feel about getting up at six o'clock and training four people outside? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to take that challenge on, Mike. Um, I think he was trying to see if I had sort of calmed down a little bit. Matured. So <laughs> Matured. <laughs> Did I? Oh, maybe not. You hit it well then. Yeah, still do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the AKR training camp, that was the first time actually that I had trained in the sort of small group setting. Mm-hmm. Um, usually it was just one-to-one or large group classes. How did you feel going from the, the transition to that? It felt okay. I felt prepared for it. Um, Like I had the programme and at at that time everybody was kind of doing the same thing. Do you know what I mean? So it felt more like a class. It was a really nice transition actually from one-to-one into small group training, what we do here. And uh, that was about five and a half years ago. And well, what they say, this uh, the rest is history. And I think um, just one more thing, just what we've built here is amazing. Do you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm so glad to be a part of it. And I think being able to build a world-class facility and <laughs> uh, a world-class team has been amazing. And I think that's where you come in, Jace. It's uh, over at me, is it? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to throw a, a big spoiler alert <laughs> straight off the bat. I didn't go travelling <laughs> and I didn't go to Dundee. <laughs> the My... <laughs> My story is a bit of a blend, actually, between the two. The similarities are quite not scary because obviously it's, it's all our values that it brings us together. But my, my first exposure to working in a gym and fitness was a week-long work experience in academy or high school or whatever. I don't know what they, what they call it here. And the only reason I took that, it was, it was at the bottom of the list and it was between two. I'd left it last minute because I didn't want to do this work experience because I didn't want to, like you, Mike, I didn't want to work in a normal job. Uh, I'm not sure if my ADHD was kicking in or what. I just I just didn't want, didn't want to do it. And everything that was on these lists was admin roles or you know you can go and work in res- like reception stuff. And I just didn't want to do any of that. And I got to the bottom of this list and it was a sports centre in Ellen, and it was for just leisure attendant, fitness attendant. Oh, that sounds fun. <laughs> I'll do that. So I clicked that, 
got, did, did that for a week and I must have left a bit of an impression because they phoned me back in summertime and asked if I wanted a job through summer, which I, I took on. By this point, I'd left school because I hated school. I hated that. Um, I hated that sort of enclosed learning environment. And I don't know what I just, I'd like to learn things at my own pace. And I like to dive into certain things at certain times. I didn't like the school's approach to, you know, you do maths in the morning, then you do English after that, and then you do art, and then you might do some PE. I'd rather just do one thing and learn it. So after I left, I started working at the, the sports center in Allen. And I was there for... You must have enjoyed it then, did you, in your work experience? Yeah, you know what, it was, it was different because I'd never, I'd never been in a gym at this point. I'd never been, I didn't know this, like people did this for a living. It was, you know, the, the, the lady was, she was really cool. She, she'd walk into a class, she'd say something, everybody would shut up. Like everyone just went quiet and you're like, oh, that's power. Like, you know, you just go so on. So you like, liked the thought oh, of that power. <laughs> but she was just like, just watching her make everybody smile and have a good time and, and, and sweat and bring people together. It was just good to see from that outside perspective. And I always remember thinking, that's quite cool. <laughs> like, just, and it was, I mean, I hate saying this now, but it was, I remember taking part in one of our spin classes and it was even in the spin class, you had people shouting at her, shouting back, and the interaction between the, 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 the clients and the teacher was just, it was just a really cool, nice thing to see. Mm -hmm. So yeah, went back in the summer and it was during that, I was like, well, maybe I'll invest a little bit more into this. So I went to do a college course in Aberdeen, forgetting that I, I didn't like doing mixy-matchy <laughs> subjects. <laughs> So I went to do this HND, which was it was actually going to be a 2-2. So I was going to do two years at college, two years at uni, which would have led me into that sort of sports science background. I did the first year and remembered I absolutely hated that environment and left. But it was also at this time I was in the process of doing a, a soccer scholarship or football. So this is where my football playing career comes in. Like we're all kind of bonded by mm -hmm. that. So I was I was doing this scholarship and it was one of those moments where I'm very all or nothing in terms of if I'm going to try something, I'm going to try something. I'm going to make, I'll, I'll do it. If I fail it, I'll keep doing it until I get better and then I'll keep going, I'll keep mm -hmm. going, keep going. But like I've kind of alluded to, I like to just focus in on that one thing. So I got rid of college. I said, I'm going to focus in on the scholarship. I had to do like SAT, so I had to do a lot of studying for that. And I was always traveling to Falkirk. I don't know why Falkirk. <laughs> but all the all the the training camps all the training camps were in Stenhouse Muir for some reason I have no idea why <laughs> that's just where we did it central central for everyone but me for me and for Peterhead <laughs> always always the same <laughs> so doing that and working at Ellen the it kind of got to the point where I was so I'm putting all my eggs in one basket here and I left Ellen I was like right I'm going full pelting at this scholarship thing trained constantly read loads of books, watched loads of YouTube on different footballers, how they moved, how they, how the mechanics worked. And I didn't make it. <laughs> so ultimately I just wasn't good enough. That's all it was. It wasn't, I, I keep telling people I was injured. It's still that dodgy. <laughs> There's that dodgy knee. If it wasn't for that knee, you know, <laughs> but yeah, I just wasn't good enough. So I, I got, I got dropped and that must've been hard. It was because I was 17, I was 16, 17 years old at this point, 17. Yeah, I must have been 17 years old, 18. And it was, it was like, like you say, it was everything. And I'd, I'd literally dropped everything to go full pelt into it. And it was just like, okay, no, see you. And there wasn't any, it was literally pulled into the office on, I think it was maybe a Wednesday morning. I think I remember it was a Wednesday <laughs> morning actually. And the office was in Glasgow, city centre, travelled down in the train. And you know, 16 year old traveled down with my suit and everything on. Went in the office, like, yeah, so we're not gonna go ahead with you. And I left the office and that was it. That was that was it. No more contact from then on. So I kind of spat the dummy out big time. I went proper sulk mode. I didn't watch football again until recently. Is that why you support Arsenal? <laughs> yeah. Until recently, <laughs> exactly. So I, did, I also spat the dummy out with training. I didn't train. I thought, well, I've got nothing to train for. What am I training for? So I also spat the dummy out with food, nutrition. I'm not training. Don't need to. Don't need to eat this time. I don't need to eat that. So I might as well just eat what I want. Like a stubborn wee boy. Like a stubborn wee boy, exactly. <laughs> and I kind of fell into this trap of 
I want to be careful when I say sort of that small town mindset of just, well, just working somewhere. So I worked in a warehouse, gained a lot of weight, wasn't really happy with where I was going and what I was doing. And but that was just that cycle. And I went through that cycle for maybe three, four years, just worked in a warehouse, worked in a pub. Between the two, you know, meals are just mm. chip vans and pub grub, beers. So it, it wasn't the best time, but it was at the same time because I remember, and I remember this very vividly, I remember walking home at lunchtime because I was sick of the, the burger van. I thought, I'm going to walk home, I'm going to make a sandwich or whatever it was. <laughs> I was walking home, it was raining, it's Peterhead, it's grey, it's dull. I'm walking home, I'm in a boiler suit, steel toe caps, I'm covered in dirt. And I just remember thinking to myself, what am I doing? What on earth am I doing? And it just that went over my head and over my head. I remember eating lunch thinking, I'm going nowhere here. I need to figure out what I'm doing. And it was, it was actually at that point I was like, well, what about the fitness thing? Like you need to get healthy again. Like you're overweight, you're not healthy. Like you, you know, you're out of breath running up the stairs. So let's, let's, let's look into this fitness thing. And I'd convinced myself by the time I'd finished my lunch to when I got back, I handed in my notice <laughs> and that was it. A clear turning point then. Yeah, literally it was one of those, I'd say a midlife crisis, but I was like 20, <laughs> two, uh, 21, 22 wow. or something. So I was like, nah, that's it. So I just went in, handed, handed my week's notice in, same with the pub. I was like, yeah, I'm done, done. And for about a month and a month and a bit, maybe living with my grandparents, same, same story, when are you going to get a job? When are you going to get a job? Yeah. Can't live here for free, like, when are you going to get a job? Mm -hmm. And it just so happened to be, I was looking for a gym to join. I went to this hotel gym and they had an opening for a cleaner. I was like, does the cleaner get free gym membership? I like, yep, yeah, cool, well, let, me, uh, let me take on that job <laughs> then. <laughs> and then from there, it was a case of just, I built, I kind of worked my way up. I went from gym cleaner to leisure attendant, leisure attendant to fitness attendant and just kept working my way up and through. Mm -hmm. Got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'd, I'd worked out myself, I'd trained, uh, I'm feeling fit, I was feeling healthy. Other people had noticed the change I'd made and were starting to inquire and ask like, oh, can you help me? I was like, well, I need to look into what I need legally. So that's when I did my PT course. And again, it was one of these things where I went in one day to work, handed my notice in, and I was like, yeah, I'm moving to Edinburgh for six months. So <laughs> can I come back then? I moved to Edinburgh for six months, did my, my PT course. Not oh, as nice as Spain, I guess, but <laughs> it was all right. It was nice. Yeah. Like, I, I liked Edinburgh. It, was, it, had, it had a good buzz to it. So I did the, the PT course, came back, waited, waited forever. Well, what seemed forever for that email? It was like, yeah, you've passed. Got the email. And then I just came straight to Aberdeen and was very fortunate to, to land in a, a private company doing one-to-one -one PT. From there, I went to a big box gym and did the, the generalized PT thing. And then that led me here. What a story, Jace. To AKR Fitness. <laughs> here we are. And here we are. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about AKR Fitness. What's, what is it and why is it? Um... I guess going back to, so I was working one-on-one -on -one freelance in a big box gym and already had a lot of frustrations, not just at that gym, but even my, my previous experience. I was frustrated at the environment and the standards of the environment. Most people in gyms aren't training particularly effectively. Um, I had my own clients and obviously I was working with, but I wanted to, I wanted more control of the environment and the atmosphere as one thing. And the other thing that was a big frustration for me, I didn't feel that the people who needed the most help were getting it in gyms. Yeah. So for a start, the people who need the most help are too intimidated even to set foot in the gym. Yeah. And then when they do, there's very little support at all. You know, you might, you might get a wee induction, a wee we, I remember. I was going to say a training a, program, yeah, but a half it's, an it's hour. A, yeah, this a is how you use sorts. this. This yeah. is how you use that. And so, so, so people come in and, and they're gone. You know, I think there was a stat I remember hearing that something like 17% of people come for one session and never come back, something like that, you know? Um, and the model, it just, it really frustrated me. And it kind of felt, you know, the big gyms I'd worked in, if, if you look around, 
it was the same faces every day and it just felt these are just kind of fit people maybe getting a little bit fitter you know but what about the people that we really need to help and that that was a frustration and i wanted to take a bit more control of my own future as well and so i'd thought even way back even way back then, I thought about, you know, just working online or starting a podcast or things like that. And the, the training camp we mentioned before was like the first foray into, okay, what is small group PT going to feel like? And what's it going to feel like when I've control of the environment? Obviously it was outdoors, so I'm not talking weather and things, but I'm talking the energy and the atmosphere and things like that. And, and that went well. And I remember writing a business plan and then, you know, starting looking for facilities and, and things began to move and, yeah, that's now that's how here. it came together. Yeah, I think that's the the attraction for me was to come take care. It was definitely the it wasn't the perceived notion of what fitness was, and it was exactly what I perceived fitness to be: you know, full body stuff, moving, energy, just happy, smiling faces, community. So yeah, but bringing it all together is just outstanding. Yeah, I, th I think it was for. It was fitness for ordinary people as yeah. opposed to fitness for fit people, <laughs> fitness fanatics, or yeah, yeah. And like, it's worth worth knowing that you you reached out to me. Like, we weren't even recruiting at the time, I don't no. think. Mm -hmm. So it's something. What was it that appealed to you at that time? Because you know that was twenty seventeen. We I don't think we would have been known at all. No, at the time it was. So I was working in a big box gym, and I hated it. Like I hated the way I was basically a glorified cleaner at this point. I hated the way fitness was perceived. Like it was just come in, do your workout, leave type thing. It was very cold. isolated. Yeah, very cold. Cold. It was just, and it was it was an old fashioned way of doing things. I thought, and I realised that I I couldn't change that business. I, it doesn't matter what I did, what I tried. There was no, they were stuck in their ways. And my wife to be actually set me up on LinkedIn, of all things. She's like, oh, I definitely need LinkedIn. It's the way forward. <laughs> and I remember, I remember being like. No, <laughs> there's no way, no chance, not, not LinkedIn. And then she just linked me with all these different gyms and businesses in Aberdeen. And that's when you popped up, you're like, oh, hey, why, what made you want to link up? How are you, like, what's happening? And you're like, do you want to come in for a workout? And then the, the, the test was on. <laughs> the test was on, I so guess. So we need to thank Jen should be here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Jen, shout out to Jen if you're listening. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a, different, a different show when we interview the partners. <laughs> Did the dog go wrong then? <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, it was the, the, like, just the, you know, when you, you, I came in, the first day I came in, you said my name to me, you said, hey, Jace, which initially I was like, oh, <laughs> that's new. <laughs> Normally it's like, uh, can I help you? Or what do you want? <laughs> so that was new. And then we just, you know, you're just, you're a human. You sat down, we spoke. You, you, you're like, oh, do you want to come in and train, get to know the players, get to know each other? I was like, yeah. Right, and that's right. when I sat in the corner and watched with a beady eye. Well, I mean, it wasn't. <laughs> the obvious part was you were sitting there with a clipboard. I mean, <laughs> it, was, it was a bit of a giveaway. No, no, no. <laughs> mm, it's kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was definitely a big, big appeal to me was just the way you did things and the way things felt more than that. It was just, it felt, it felt good. Like you say, there, you mentioned energy, which... We're going to speak about in the next episode. We'll, we'll get all into that. And it, the energy just felt right. I mean, I'm not a big believer in serendipity. Like, I don't think things happen for a reason. But I do believe I was in the, in the right place at the right time to be where I'm at now. That's probably a good place to, to round things up for yeah. episode one, is it? Yeah. So, yeah. Folks, thank you so much for listening. If you've enjoyed, please join us in the next one. Episode two, we are going to talk all things energy. Mike, you have this mantra. Energy is everything. Yeah, we'll dig into that next time. And we'll get stuck in. Folks, thank you very much, and we'll see you soon.